I've been spending weeks researching the best drift cars in GT Online, and I've had many years of experience when it comes to drifting cars. And here are the top 10 in my opinion. Now the Nebula Turbo just about makes it on this list. It's still a really good drift car, it's just all the cars are good at drifting on this list. The Nebula Turbo is a really good controlling car, but it's just slow, it's like I need to fast forward the footage for it to be entertaining. If you're not patient, then don't use this car. If you want to make drifting look easy, use this car. Because this will give you the confidence to think you are a really good drifter and then you realise you're getting another car that, oh, it's not that easy. <laughs> a lot of people would advise, you know, getting an easy car like this for a beginner. But I don't think so. I don't think you should start like this for a beginner. It gives you kind of false hope. I think you should get into the more difficult cars and practice with those and then it'll make you a better drifter. The Schwarzer in GTA has always been a good drift car and like a lot of cars on this list, low grips actually helps out. We used to have to lower this car but all you need is low grips and it makes it a lot more smoother. The way we used to have to drift when we lowered our car we had to put a lot of work to make our car slide out but now with low grip tyres it's just all buttery smooth. You can just pull the handbrake and you're sliding and then you can carry on sliding from there. Before you had to pull the handbrake and then accelerate fully or double clutch. But no, with this you can get some smooth drifting. And I would say it's a slow to medium pace drifter. And you know, you can get it off the street, it's free, so why not? Especially with all these new modifications. I say new modifications, they released one and a half years ago, but for the age of GTA 5, it's relatively new. The Remus. The Remus is an interesting one because I thought it would be a lot higher on the list. And that thought comes from when this car actually came out, it was the best of the tuners cars, drift cars, and that's the only cars you could could put low grips on but now that you can put low grips on a lot more cars there are a lot more cars that are better than this car in my opinion the remus a lot of drift crews use it to be fair i'm not sure about today because now they have unlocked low grips for everything one but the remus is a car that seems like it was actually suited for low grips which it probably was you can do low speed drifting high speed drifting if you could call it high speed drifting there's no shame in yanking the handbrake again and again it does make your car look smoother a lot of people call it cheating but you know, that's what real drifters do or rally car drivers do. I would just say don't keep yanking it at the end of a drift just to make your drift look smoother. But yeah, a car that can get so much angle, make you look like a pro drifter. This is a definitely car that's easy to use. You probably was not expecting this on the list, <laughs> the Dominator. The Dominator, just because it has so much low down torque, there are actually a few muscle cars in the game that are really good at drifting. And I'm pretty sure someone's going to comment a muscle car. I've, I've tried nearly all muscle cars now. I'm, I'm so exhausted. But someone's probably going to comment one that's better than the Dominator. I know the Faction is very good also. But the Dominator, I love it because it reminds you that it's a muscle car. Every time you touch the handbrake or you get a certain angle or you grip up a bit more, you know it's a muscle car instantly because of how rigid it is and you can see that the car just wobble and I think that's attention to detail that sometimes we forget in GT Online. The difference between sports cars, muscle cars, supercars and the Dominator is like a sporty muscle car as well so even with low grip tyres it's quite manageable when you're driving normally with low grip. The low end torque makes this car so good at drifting, something I recommend again because it's free. The Banshee 900R. I wasn't too sure to put this on the list and I feel the same about the Rapid GT because they're more pro level drift cars. Once you are good at drifting those cars then you'll get better angles and, and longer drifts than any other car on this list. Maybe not better drift angles than the number one on this list. But the Rapid GT, trust me, just spend 30 minutes at least practicing because a lot of people, what they do is they'll get in the Banshee, they'll put low grips on it, they'll realise after five minutes that they can't drift it, it spins out quite easily. But in reality if you actually just wait 30 minutes or so practice with the car do less steering input you'll get used to the car and how much throttle you should put in and as soon as you get used to it you can become one of the best drifters and if you put low grips on this car it makes it a lot easier it makes you work a lot less and it allows you to pull the handbrake a lot more the sentinel like why the sentinel it seems like we're getting a lot of first gen cars in this list. I don't know what the correlation is. I don't know why. I'm not going to suspect anything from it. Just a Sentinel XS, not HSW by the way. This is not a HSW car. Sentinel XS just feels natural with low grip tires. I, I don't always like the fact that this was supposed to be like a 3 series or a BMW and you had to work hard to get it to oversteer. But once low grip tires came out, I mean it came nine years later, but it definitely awakened this car. This car is now likely just a classic. 
it feels better with low grips on it. Not the HSW version, that's just got too much power. I was drifting this more earlier into when I started testing these cars and I thought this was going to be at the top. It feels so easy and feels so natural. But no, we've got cars that are better than this. The Mamba, another rewarding car. A car that I wouldn't say is easy to drift. A lot of people who already have this car and drive it quite regularly know it's a car that you need to fight with. Like it is very oversteery at a natural state. So you'd think with low grip tires, it would make it impossible to drive. But no, it's actually possible. It's actually a very good drift car. And that's why it's high up on the list. Just seeing those thick tire marks behind you, just knowing what this car is based off, it brings so much satisfaction. You know, I definitely wouldn't say it looks natural to drift but it feels great another car i think a lot of people weren't expecting or were you expecting the warrener the warrener you think oh it's hardly got any power it shouldn't be that good at drifting it's a very random car as well it's not like gta are gonna make low grips work for this car but for some reason it just felt very natural it felt like every time i threw it into a corner i knew where it was going to be and that's what i can say about this car it's very predictable i would highly advise you to try it out i think it's got the right amount of power you can modify it to look like it's suited to drift i wish i was just introduced to gta now so I had all these wide selection of cars to look at and not think of cars as first generation cars and cars that I've just released. Just look at them in a different perspective because a Warrener is one that I'd really admire. Some cars I can't translate in words how good they are at drifting, but you can just see with the way I'm swinging this car around that, yeah, I'm kind of used to it. Ironically, or maybe not so ironically, the Futo and the Futo GTX are similar on the list. The controlling is very similar. You've just got a lot more power in the Futo GTX. And of course, the Futo, you can just get off the street. So, and of course, the Futo, you can just get off the street. So keep in mind when I'm talking about this Futo GTX next, the control and everything is the same as the Futo. The control and everything is the same as the Futo, but it has a lot more power. And yeah, this car is so easy to drive and free. It's free. The Futo GTX second place this car has so much wheel spin so much wheel spin it has enough power it feels like it has way too much torque for what it is you know you'd think this thing was slow but it's not and earlier i did say the remus was the best tuner's drift car but i think this one is a lot better a lot more beginner friendly again but this feels like it's beginner friendly and pro friendly you can drift it at very slow speeds like i am in the video you can drift it at very high speeds as well. It's just a cool car. It's a cool overall car. It's one of the best drift cars in the game. And it's so satisfying to drift as well. So smooth, so elegant. All the way through the speed ranges, it is an amazing drift car. Now the drift tamper. I know people are going to be like, Hella, it's got drift in its name. Of course, it'll be able to drift. What a boring answer or what a boring thing to put at number one. Something that has a drift in its name. But a lot of you also will probably remember when this thing couldn't drift. When it was called the drift tamper and it couldn't drift. But now low grip tires fixes all of that. You can get some insane angles. It's the only all wheel drive car on the list. But once you start yanking the handbrake on this car, you can make the drift last way longer than it should. So you can calculate it. You can... You can drift early into a corner, but because you keep yanking that handbrake, you can make it look like it was meant to be as perfect slides right into it. Because I had a lot more cars to test, I would have provided better drift footage. But this car is now just a dream to drift. It's like you're ice skating and you have control of your ice skates, which probably won't be me. A car with such good purpose now. You know, it's like the Hakuchi drag bike. It has its purpose, it works, it goes fast, it goes straight. The drift tamper now does its purpose. It drifts beautifully. You still do have to put a bit of effort into it. You can't just drive it straight and it will drift that corner for you. But if you have any interest in drifting, which you probably are if you got to the end of this video, then you should purchase it and put low grips on it. And all the cars on this list, if you do lower them, if they have the ability to lower, it will be even more slippery. So keep that in mind. And that is it. Remember, if you want some of these cars and they're no longer on the market, which is probably a lot of them, you can join our Discord, our trading server, and you can just purchase them in Ellis Car Meet from other people and some maybe with unique mods. Thank you so much for watching. I'd see you guys in the next one.